Oh hey, didn't see you there. Now I know some of you beauties just do photography for fun. Some of you do it to make a living. Today, all of you can do it to make some money with real estate photography if you do it the right way. Wow, that was the most real estate intro ever. All right, let's get right into it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is shoot with a wide angle lens from a lower angle. Reason being, a wide angle lens makes the whole area look a lot larger and so does shooting from a lower angle. If you're shooting up high, you're not gonna see very much of the ceiling and stuff. It kinda makes the room look smaller than it is. And the same goes for a very tight angle. If I'm using like an 85 millimeter, you're only gonna capture part of the room, whereas like a nice wide 16 or 35 captures a lot more area. Check out the differences. Now, the second thing you wanna do is make sure your photos are bright and inviting. Me personally, for my photography style, it's kinda of dark, it's kinda of moody. You have to put your personal preferences on the shelf for this. You're trying to create a space that's inviting and you're gonna make someone want to buy this place or rent it or whatever the pictures are for. How do you do that? Firstly, you're gonna to wanna to get a tripod, put your camera on the tripod, and take long exposure photos, especially in darker rooms. Now, they may be darker in real life, but in the pictures, you want people to feel that it's bright, it's full of natural light, and that's the way to go. Now, if it's available to you, I suggest bringing a small light, you know, like nothing crazy, but just use that to light darker areas of a room, or perhaps even make uh, a different lighting setup to make the, the shot more dynamic. Here's some examples of that. going to want to do is make sure you shoot the right angle. Shooting the wrong angle in a house could actually hurt you more than it helps you. You want to focus on selling features and making the individual room look as good as possible. Check out the differences here. The next thing is to be selective. It's quality over quantity in this case. You can't have 400 pictures showcasing every square inch of the house. In fact, most real estate agents can only use up to 20 pictures. Make sure you're picking the best ones and putting those ones out. Now I know what you're thinking, but Daniel, what if I wanna offer video services? Don't worry, I got you babies. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put the B-roll on the shelf for this one. I know that epic, fast, slow-mo, speed ramping B-roll looks really cool, but it doesn't really have a place in selling real estate. For example, Does it look cool? Yes. Was it awesome to edit that B-roll? Yes. Is it doing the job that you needed to? Absolutely not. You wanna showcase stuff, not flash stuff by the screen and you know, the viewer has no idea what's going on. They really have no idea what they're getting into in terms of buying a house. So shelf the B-roll for this one. Now, have you guys heard the story of the tortoise and the hare? No? Let me tell it to you. Just kidding, we don't have that much time. The point I'm trying to make here is slow and steady wins the race. When you're showing a room via video, you want to slowly dolly through that room, show as much as you can, give the viewer time to process. Speed ramping is okay, but very lightly, only to sort of enter a room and then show it off. For example, check this out. And finally, you guys gotta remember that the property is part of the sale. Make sure you get sufficient video of the outside property. You know, if you have a drone available to you, drone through the area, make it look cool. If you don't, get your camera out and start walking around the property. Some slow-mo dollies and pans of the outside is perfect. Come to think of it, I probably should have given you this tip while I was outside. Now, using everything I just talked about, Here's my video that I would use to sell this cozy little cottage.
and here are the photos. Now that you guys have the weapons, the next step is to get out there and shoot. If you don't have an existing portfolio, my advice is drive through a nice area, a nice neighborhood, check out the for sale signs, and contact the real estate agent who's selling. Call them up, email them, say, listen, I'm willing to do this for free as I want to get some awesome footage to build a demo reel or to build a portfolio. Chances are they're not going to say no to free pictures and you can get some awesome, awesome footage in a really nice house. Build up that demo reel, build up that portfolio, and I guarantee you, you can start making some serious money with real estate photography and video. If you guys learned something today, if you liked the video, make sure you hit that like button, leave some comments down below, and don't forget to subscribe so I can catch you guys in the next video. Love ya.